Hey everybody, this is Townsend. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, and mental health advocate, and I started the You're Not Alone project and podcast to help educate, spread awareness, simply help you feel a little less alone, no matter what you're going through. Thank you so much for tuning in to Season 2 of You're Not Alone with Townsend. Be sure to click the follow button and share these stories. You can also watch the interviews on our YouTube under Townsend T Music. You can also keep up with the journey if you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Townsend T Music. Every like, follow, and share helps us continue to change lives. What is up, everybody? This is Townsend. Welcome to this episode of You're Not Alone with Townsend. I say this every week, but I'm extremely excited about this. So I love mental health. I love the brain and everything about the brain. And so today we're going to be talking about Parkinson's disease, what that means, what that looks like. And I am so honored to be able to chat with Jason Tracy. I just recently met him. We were chatting before we hopped on here. Super nice guy. I got to know him through social media. Um, He's really into working out. Out. He's into sharing his story about Parkinson's and it really just drew my attention because Parkinson's is something I feel like people don't know much about and they don't know the details, but it's a term that people honestly, I feel like they're scared of. It's like a word that you want to whisper, you know, so I love that you joined. Thank you so, so much for joining me and just kind of describing what this is to people, walking us through your journey, what this looks like. So thank you for taking the time to chat with us, Jason. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Yeah. So let's introduce you. Let's hop in. So who the heck is Jason Tracy? Where are you from? What what does your life look like? Well, I've been, I grew up in Sonoma County, which is north of San Francisco in California and on the coast up there. It's a pretty remote area. And I went to college at Chico State, which is a California State University in uh, Northern California. And I got, I was a recreation major and a business minor. So I got into the resort industry. And so I worked at Pebble Beach for the last 28 years. Wow. And so Pebble Beach Resorts is very famous for its golf course. We have a golf tournament coming up this week called the AT&T Pro-Am. And uh, so I I worked in the hotel and and the tennis club for 28 years. And so I... I got diagnosed when I was about 35 years old in 2004, and so I've been living this journey for about 20 years now of having Parkinson's disease, and I just actually medically retired from the Pebble Beach Company, uh, and September 22nd was my last day, so I'm now full-time into helping people and educating people and being an advocate for Parkinson's disease. Wow, that was a lot of information in like five seconds. I have so many questions. One, I'm envious. What a job. Like one Pebble Beach, the golf course, the dent, like that sounds like perfection. Okay, I just want to stop there. So one, amazing. I feel like you're some surfer dude. (laughs) It's a beautiful place. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So obviously sports plays a big part. Have you always been into health and fitness? Yeah. Yes, I have. I, you know, I grew up, I was a, a runner in high school, so I did track and cross country and I played tennis in college. Okay. Um, and so um, I, I met my wife at a tennis camp and uh, oh, wow. she teaches okay. tennis full time. So uh, we, we, my sons and my daughter both played soccer growing up. So we have a very sports oriented family. Let's put it that very way. active. I'll, okay. Okay. Well, that goes really hand in hand with your social media. So something that you do mm-hmm. every day, I've noticed you post a little video of you working out. It's like Parkinson's exercise, which I love. You're showing things that are difficult for you now that people take for granted. I don't know that you even mean it that way, but I saw, I think it was yesterday you were showing getting out of a chair and it took yeah. you a couple of attempts to do it, but not yeah. using your hands and just using your body. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I love that you're spreading awareness like that and you're incredibly fit might I add okay you're you, you have much more yeah. muscle than I do let's just go ahead and throw that out there um so for people that don't know let's go ahead and talk about Parkinson's let's break it down so if you were to define it how would you define Parkinson's I want to personally thank you for taking the time to listen to these conversations it truly means so much We've changed so many lives for the better, and we want to continue doing so throughout 2023. This project is made possible by sponsors and patrons. So if you'd like to help keep the You're Not Alone project going and hearing these amazing stories, we would love for you to join the family at patreon.com slash Townsend T Music. Just for signing up, you'll get free merch, discounts, and behind-the-scenes patron-only footage not only of my music, but of each episode. 
That's right. So each guest on every episode answers a few more questions that only patrons will be able to watch and listen to. So head on over to patreon.com slash Townsend Team Music, and let's continue changing lives. Well, perfect Parkinson's is a neurological condition, and it, it basically, it's a movement disorder that, that prevents people from doing common exercises and common pr- projects throughout the day. And so your daily activities are, are compromised and you can't do them. And it, it's, you've seen pictures of Michael J. Fox on TV uh, yeah. earlier on where he's shaking around and, and moving around. Well, that's actually not Parkinson's. That's, that's a, a product of the, of the medication that he's taking. Um, wow. Parkinson's, your muscles don't move. And so or you have a tremor in your arm or your, your leg. Uh, and so what ends up happening is Parkinson's is, is controlled by medication. And so medication is, is um, you build up a tolerance to the medication after the, a while and you build, you get what's called dyskinesia. And dyskinesia yeah. is the, the byproduct of the, basically you're running um, into the, in the medication, you're building up a tolerance to the medication. Wow. So that is if incredible. I don't take my medication, I don't move. So I, it's yeah. hard for me to walk if I don't take my medication and that type of thing. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot of unknown, as you said before. A lot of people don't know what Parkinson's is, and yes. it's uh, it, it affects people in different ways. There's tremor, there's freezing of gait, and there's um, rigidity, and there's um, in different forms of Parkinson's where people have agility problems and balance problems, and so there's a, there's a handful of things that can can affect a person and, and be affected by Parkinson's. So. Oh, wow! So it's like if you do take your medicine. It can help. If you don't take it, you may move too much. If you don't take it, you may move too little. It's just like you got to find a happy medium, huh? Exactly. And it's always hard hard to find that balance. And one of the things I just did a year ago is I had deep brain stimulation surgery at UCSF in San Francisco. And they put electrodes into my head and I have a pacemaker in my chest that controls the frequency of my brain. And so therefore, I don't have to take as much medication now and it controls my dyskinesia. Wow. So it's really been, been a positive thing for me. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. Technology has come so, so far. Um, yes. So basically it's, it's a disorder of like the nervous system, like you said, so it, it controls parts of your body that are controlled by movement. So what he means is yes. you can move a lot because of that medication or getting used to that medicine, or you can move very little, but it can affect everything. Right. I mean, I'm talking swallowing speech, yep. walking. Yep. Yes. Goodness. Going to the bathroom. Um, Into the bathroom, yeah. Everything you take for granted daily. Yeah, your sense of smell. Your your a lot of people have lose their sense of smell is an early sign of Parkinson's disease. Wow. And so it's it's, it's one of those things. that's not in my family, and so I've got it environmentally is how I got it. As wow. I can't prove how I got it, but I yeah. worked in the, in the hotel business for many years, and um, the the dry cleaners that used to clean my clothes used perclethylene up until 2004 when the EPA mandated that they go green. Um, so wow. perclethylene is definitely causing Parkinson's disease. So I get to remember smelling it on my suits and my car and my closet. And I grew up in Wellwater. I lived in near agricultural fields in Salinas for many years. So there's a number of things that could have caused it. So wow. oftentimes people have what's called a weak gene and the environment pulls the trigger. Wow. So that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you can get it genetically though, correct? You can, you can. Like only five percent of the cases are genetic and 95% are, are environmental. Really? I had no idea. Holy moly. Okay. So you said you received your diagnosis and you were 35. 35, 54 now. So uh, wow, that's so young. Now, I, most, most people get their diagnosis around 60 plus. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And there's about, about 10% of the population gets it below 50. So I'm in that lucky group of 10%. That lucky. Okay. Okay. That just means you had more time to learn about it. That's right. That's so right. what What were your first symptoms? I mean, being 35, I'm not far away from that. So what What are some things we could watch out for? Well, I was I was having tremors in my right pinky or my left pinky when I was in high stress or high anxiety situations when I was working at the hotel at Pebble Beach. You know, a guest would come up and they'd be angry about something and they'd want to vent. And I I'd f- noticed my pinky was tremoring a little bit. And I put my hands in my pocket and didn't think anything more of it. Right. And I went and had, t- I thought I had carpal tunnel syndrome or something you know, from typing all the time on the computer. So I ended up going to a neurologist locally in Monterey. And um, they ruled out Wilson's disease and mercury poisoning and uh 
you know, Lyme's disease, and, and all those things were ruled out, which have similar symptoms in many ways because they're, they're neurological. Right. And, and she had uh, diagnosed me with Parkinson's because there isn't a test to diagnose you for Parkinson's. It's all a matter of motor skills and and your walking and your gait and everything else that they can test your your ability. So I got a referral up to the San Francisco University of California, San Francisco, which is one of the best hospitals in the world. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, I met a neurologist up there and he also diagnosed me with Parkinson's. So wow. you know, okay. it was, a, it was the, the, the card I was dealt and I figured I would make the best of it. That's all That's I could it. do. So they caught yeah. it pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and a, so a I, pinky tremor and they were able to figure it out. That's pretty and impressive. Just, yeah, I didn't take medication for five years and after that diagnosis because I wanted to see if I could survive without it. But then it came down to a quality of life situation. So, you know, the medication that people use mostly is carbidopa levodopa, which has been around since the 1960s. So it's that, been... that sounds like it has 77 consonants in it. Car <laughs> carbidopa levodopa? Yeah, it's two words, carbidopa okay. levodopa. <laughs> and so... It's a, it's the one medication that works mostly for most people. So, um, and they've done a lot of variations of the of the medication or new medications over the years. And mm -hmm. everyone refers back to them. Carbidopa levodopa is the main medication that works for best okay. best for most people. Wow. Yeah. Did you know anything about Parkinson's beforehand? I mean, obviously you'd probably heard of it, but did you know in detail kind of what it entailed? No, no I really didn't. It was one of those things where you'd see Michael J. Fox on TV when he was, because he was diagnosed in the early, late 20s. Right. I feel um, like he was kind of the first that brought was. up the conversation. He did. And um, his as his foundation has been amazing for what they've done to the, the world of, of Absolutely. You know, study and also research for Parkinson's disease. It's been incredible. Wow. So, have you ever gotten a chance to chat with him? I have. I had the opportunity what? to meet him. Four years ago, um, he was playing golf, and I got to meet him. Wow. And, uh, is he as nice minutes. as he seems? He is. He's a wonderful guy. So, yeah, I, you know, I just about 15 minutes I had to spend with him, and he had to catch a flight home to New York, so I didn't have a lot of time, but it was it was very nice to meet him. So That is amazing. Yeah, he seems like just a down-to-earth, amazing guy, and he, ha he really has shown like a, a bright light on the Parkinson's topic, which yeah. I love. He's spreading yeah. awareness and he's making it a normal conversation. That's right. Yeah. 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 I mean, there the are media, millions. He, yeah. yeah, there are millions yeah. of people that are affected by this. And like I said yes. in the very beginning, it's almost like a term that's been hush-hush. Like, sh we don't want to yeah. talk about that. We don't, we don't wish that on anybody, but it's something that people need to know about. And that's why I started this podcast to begin with is it's about mental health. We all have bad days. We have diagnoses and it's better to talk about it than to turn your head yeah. away from it. I agree a hundred percent. And that's why I, I, I talk about it in my, my posts on social media and I, I try to, to bring a light to the world and yeah. be a positive influence to people because there's, you know, a lot of people, depression, anxiety are very prevalent in, in, in this disease. And so, you know, 60% of people get some kind of depression or high anxiety. So I can only just, imagine. I mean, your life totally shifts. Yeah. And it yeah. affects, correct me if I'm wrong, but Parkinson's, the way that the central nervous system and all those things work, it, it uh, affects your dopamine as well, which is like your happiness. Yeah. Yeah, and basically yeah. you have a lack of dopamine in your substantia nigra of your brain, and you have it's not producing it for some reason, and it's killing, being killed off. So they they know what's missing in the brain. They just got to figure out how to replicate it and and get it back in there and replenish it. So, so I'd imagine people getting upset easily, getting depressed easily. Yeah. I will say this: I'm not going to lie, Jason. You make you kind of make you make me happy. But you also made me really upset about myself because, like, you're really in shape and you like you look really great in short shorts. And I'm like, dang it, Jason, why am I sitting on my couch watching this? I should be up working out. You just you kind of make me feel bad about myself, but that's okay. Well, that's not my intention at all. So my my goal I'm is totally to try, kidding. I, my goal is to try to bring exercise as the number one defense for for Parkinson's disease. So. You're if doing you can a great job. Exercise, you can you can head it off a little bit and slow down the part of the progression is hopefully the goal. Absolutely. So, so the worst thing you want to do is just sit. Yes, because your your muscles atrophy. Yeah. And you you don't, you don't get any movement. So uh, I I walk you know two miles every couple of days and I work out in the gym and I do a lot of stretching and in the morning when I wake up and 
you know, you, you can't you can't take it for granted that your your body function is going to be there. You got to you got to do something about it. So. Absolutely, I love that. What in the world keeps you motivated to work so hard? And not only that, but to post about your journey. You know, I've always been a, a very positive person, and um, I don't have a, I don't think negatively. I mean, the glass is always half full in my life, so I, I've been very blessed, and I have a wonderful wife and two wonderful kids, and. Uh, I, I live in a beautiful area, so there's a lot to be thankful for. I worked for a great company, and so now I'm trying to pass it on to everyone else. That there's, you know, I, I always say, focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. That's right. And I so I, I try to use that as a motto. And I have four Fs I live by: faith, family, friends, and fitness. And wow, that's what I love. I, the, okay, I need to add that last one on there: fitness. I'm working on it, yeah. Jason. I'm working on it. It's a new, it's the right. beginning of the new year. I've got a goal. Yeah. I've got a goal, just like everybody else in America. So, okay. So you were talking about yours wasn't genetic, but could you, since you've had it, can yours be genetic for your children? Uh, it, it, there's a 50% chance that my kids will get Parkinson's disease. Okay. And Is there a way they can catch that early? Um, they can not really, um, it's, it's kind of, uh, not a death sentence, but it's a sentence that they're going to get, they may not get it. They may get it. Who knows? We don't know. Yeah. I didn't know if there was a way they could test since they know you have no. like a blood test. You can go on to 2023 and me, which is a local uh, website out of the Bay area, which is a, a genetic, um, website. And you can try to go on there and try to they give you some give a saliva sample and they can test your, I don't know what you call it, the, the proclivity of different illnesses that you could have. And so that that's one way to possibly do it. And okay. Wow. That's, that's pretty thorough yeah. little test. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So that's amazing. 23andMe is, I guess the founder of it was founder of Google. His mother had uh, Parkinson's disease. And so he, he developed 23andMe. So it's a 20, 23 chromosomes in the, in the body. So that's right. why. Can I, you or, imagine having a conversation with that guy? He'd be so smart. Yeah. It'd be unreal. <laughs> I had no that's idea right. that that was the Google guy. Yeah. I think it was the founder of Google. That that's his amazing. mother had. Okay. I didn't yeah. know any of that. I'm going to have to look into that. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So you, Jason, you said you're a positive person. Your glass is always half full, but I know there got to be days where you struggle. So what have you found to be the biggest struggle since your diagnosis? What's something that's been the hardest thing to overcome? Um, probably my handwriting is atrocious. I can't <laughs> write anymore and I can't yeah. type. And so I, I, that's one of the reasons I had to stop working because it was, it was becoming too much of a challenge at work. And so I wanted to go out on my terms. And so I went to my, my company and my boss and said, look, I think I need to back off and take some time away from work. And 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 before it became a problem for them, and I didn't want it to be a problem for them. And you know, my balance is I, I sometimes fall, and so my balance is what I'm working on. I'm trying to yeah. with my exercise. I'm trying to get really um, my balance back, and yeah. and and that's probably the two, my two biggest struggles are my balance and my writing that I have to deal with every day. But yeah, I, like I said, if that's the least of my concerns, and I'm I'm okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Those sound pretty small as to what I, I was thinking. I'm not going to lie. Uh, my friends that read my handwriting, I get in trouble probably multiple times a month because my handwriting is atrocious and I don't have Parkinson's. So I laughed yeah. at that answer because I'm like, well, uh, it's mine might be as bad as yours. And that yeah. that's really saying something. Yeah. Yeah. Golly, golly. Yeah. I have my what wife fill out all my paperwork now. So. Yeah. Hey, that's great. How in the world do you keep up with TikTok? Like you're always doing these videos and I can imagine yeah. texting on a small device is pretty tough. You know, actually, it, it, most of it's pretty good because I'm able to use voice commands and, yeah. you know, I type, but, you know, I don't, I, I'm able to do it on my iPad pretty well. And so um, I, I try to, I do TikTok and Instagram and I also have a LinkedIn. I try to do some LinkedIn with the, the Parkinson's communities in those areas. So, so cool. That's pretty, that's yeah. pretty talented. I'm not going to lie. Even I have trouble with these little technology that I'm like, there's so much social media. Uh, what do you feel like? So we talked about the F's, the family, the faith, fitness, all of yeah. those things. What do you feel like helps you most on the tough days? My my faith in Jesus Christ is is my number one thing in my life, and uh, without that, I'm lost, and I don't have anything to, to shoot for. So um, that's why my faith is my number one thing. I, I base my my faith on as as uh, is keeping me a positive person, and also keeping me 
um, supportive of my family and and there for my family and they're there for me all the time. So a great, great support group. Yeah. So. I love that so much. Absolutely. Where do you find, so for people watching, I always get messages about support. Where can people find support or help, or if they needed to reach out somewhere, <laughs> what do you feel like has given you the most support? Well, the, the Parkinson's community is a great community to get support from, and there's American Parkinson's Disease Association and the Parkinson's Foundation and the Michael J. Fox Foundation. So you can get a lot of resources through those organizations that can help. You can also Google on your local area um, support groups that are meeting in your local area, and they are very positive as well. They often have, often have guest speakers that come in. And then also you can do uh, rock steady boxing is is really spread world, uh, nationwide and they have gyms all over the country and you can get good support through them as wow. well. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Rock city boxing. Yeah, and our our the gym I go to over in the Power of Parkinson's is a, is a boxing gym. So half of our classes we do boxing and we try to get the movement and the agility and the balance and it's really good. That is really cool. I love that. Yeah. So they yeah. do, do they provide classes like just for the Parkinson's clients? Yep. Too it's only, cool. It's only for Parkinson's. Yeah. Wow, and that's Rock amazing. City boxing, you know, Rock City Boxing throughout the, the nation has classes for Parkinson's only people. So they found that boxing is one of the benefit, be, be, very best benefits of, of exercise is boxing and the coordination that's involved in it. So yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, you go to sucker punch somebody, that takes a lot of balance. <laughs> that's right. That That's is right. too cool. I had never heard of that. I'm going to, well, now I got to go look it up. Now I got two things to look up. The guy that did Google yeah. and then Rock yeah. City Boxing. Of course, this yeah. was like great advertisement for them, by the way. <laughs> if they want to sponsor me, I'm up for a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what, what advice would you have for people that may be going through the same journey or they have loved ones going through this? Like what, what's something you would want them to know? Yeah, it's it's important that you know that, that people need support and and you can't go through this alone. And so um, you you got to have a network of people, whether it's uh, your family or support group people that are in the gym you go to, and and just talk to people because it's important to know that you're not alone out there. And you you can't you, you once you get your diagnosis, you can't take it away. It's, there's no cure for Parkinson's disease. So focus on what you can do and not what you can't do and and try to and don't 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 try to do this alone because it's it's important that you have support all the way around. I so, love that. So how do you yeah. you know we focus on physical? How do you yeah. keep your mental abilities sharp? What do you do to practice that? Well, I I read uh, a lot and I also um, I keep active on on social media, so I'm, I'm using my brain as much as I can. That's it. Making um, those TikToks that takes a lot of work. It does, and so. Um, I'm I'm working with a company in Australia right now called PD Warrior, and um, they they have a 10 week exercise program that I'm participating in, and it's all online. And um, I I jump at every opportunity I can to be positive and uh, to be uh, to sh to help people with the other, other opportunities there are in the world of Parkinson's. So um, there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there. Let's put it that way. I love that. I love that there's information. I love that a light has kind of been shown on it, that people are talking about it, that it's a conversation now. I love that you are helping spread a light and you can be like, listen, you can have Parkinson's and have a 12 pack like I do. So, <laughs> Jason, I want to thank you so, so much for joining us. It was short. It was sweet, but I feel like I learned so much just in that short little 20, 30 minutes that we got to chat. Thank you for taking the time out. I know that you are incredibly busy, but it means the world to me and all my listeners. You're welcome. Happy to be here. It was a pleasure joining you on this podcast. Absolutely. Listen, I come out to California. I'm going to have to come visit at Pebble Beach. Yeah. You're going to have to give me a tour of the golf courses and the tennis. Yeah. But listen, when I swing the golf ball, just look the other way because I may or may <laughs> not hit the ball and I don't I don't want to be embarrassed. OK, I won't say a word. <laughs> OK, as long as it's just between me and you. It's okay. a deal. It's a deal. Jason, let's keep in touch. I would love to keep up with your journey and just check in on me every now and then. All right, Townsend. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Y'all have a good evening and it has been a pleasure. Yeah. Me too. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. If you're in the market to buy or sell, I have the perfect company for you. Clark & Co. Realty is located in the Benton, Bryant, Arkansas area. They're able to serve you no matter where you're located in the state. 
They've streamlined the process of buying or selling a home to make it so much easier. They have a team of industry experts that make sure you have access from anything you can think of. I'm talking from local home inspectors to painters to gardeners and so much more just to provide you with the best service possible. They're dedicated to providing the most up-to-date market data in the area. And I think the coolest part is if you go on their website, you can use their easy-to-use fast property search. You can even create a custom market report to see what's active, under contract, and sold in your neighborhood. Their team is made up of caring, knowledgeable professionals that work around the clock to help you with the process of buying and selling your home. So again, if you're in the market to buy or sell, Clark & Co Realty is definitely the company for you. Tell them Townsend sent you. Let's be honest, I think we could all use somebody to talk to every now and then. Healing Path Counseling in Conway, Arkansas is 100% my go-to when it comes to therapy. Wendy Blackwood has more credentials than letters in the alphabet. She's won awards for her outstanding services and has a whole page of board memberships. Basically, she knows what she's doing. She works hard to help equip you with the tools needed to live your best life. She even offers a variety of services including, but not limited to, cognitive behavioral therapy, technology-assisted counseling, relationship counseling, and EMDR. Trust me, I know therapy can be intimidating at first, but let me assure you, Wendy does her best to make you comfortable and find the best solutions and plans for you. Trust me, don't wait to make the call. Give Wendy Blackwood at Healing Path Counseling a call today. Get started on the best version of you.